Welcome back. Our next guest is the award-winning author of bestsellers, So You Want to Talk About Race and Mediocre, which deepened our understanding of race and racism in society and the legacy of white male supremacy. In her latest book, Be a Revolution, she highlights people across America working toward meaningful change and ways we can all fight systems of oppression in daily life. Everyone, please welcome Ijoma Oluo. <laughs> It's such a pleasure. Ijoma, as we said earlier, you wrote two best-selling titles that were so impactful. But you say the process of writing this particular book was one of the most transformative in your career. Tell us, tell us why. It absolutely was. You know, when I first came to this book, I was really tired. I had spent over five years on my previous books writing about violence while also, you know, living as a black queer woman and being subject to that same violence. And I was exhausted and my heart hurts. And I really wanted to spend time in a different space. Yeah. And also, I'm always hearing people say, I don't know what to do. And I wanted to showcase mm -hmm. our community and what it has been doing and how important that has been to our survival. And when 2020 hit and the pandemic hit and the uprising for black lives, I think it really underscored how vital community has been for multiple generations for BIPOC communities and other marginalized communities. Mm -hmm. um, you say that one of the weapons of white supremacist patriarchy is its war against imagination. What does that mean? Yeah, this was so important for me in understanding what's happening and where we need to go. This idea that the systems that we have right now are the best we could hope for, that maybe we can tweak it and that's about it, but if you ask for more, we risk everything, mm -hmm. is really damaging. It's damaging on multiple levels. One, it stops us from really addressing systemic issues, mm -hmm. but also it erases all of the beautiful creativity in our communities that aren't being currently served by systems. So a lot of communities of color know they can't rely on perhaps our police forces and other social services programs for help. So they're coming together and building creative solutions. And yet we're told that this doesn't exist and we can't hope for more. Mm -hmm. And that's so damaging when we're trying to solve these problems. Yeah, mm. and let's talk about that because it can be so discouraging, especially in this 24-hour news cycle that we live in, to see these big stories with these oppressive systems and think, well, what can I do as an individual? How can I help? I want to help, but I feel so helpless. So what words of encouragement would you give to somebody who wants to make change but feels like they don't know what to do? I think it's important, first of all, to understand that that idea that there's nothing you can do is by design. That's really manufactured. Mm -hmm. This idea that it's too big, it's too hard, nothing can be done, and nothing is being done. Mm -hmm. And part of how they do that is by erasing the stories of what we're doing. You don't see new stories of how community comes together to take care of itself, mm -hmm. of how we're solving problems, how we're rising up to try to help on a one-on-one -on -one level, on a street level, on a city level. Mm -hmm. And instead, you're only seeing you know, extreme violence or strife or nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And so know that that is important. And then I would say, if you wanna know where to start, mm -hmm. start local. Mm. Look at what's already being done in your communities. Mm. Because every community that is disenfranchised is fighting so hard for itself and for each other. Mm. And ask, how can I help? Mm. How can I join? Mm. And trust me, I have never met a movement that isn't happy to have people join. Yeah. Okay. So nice. uh, the title of the book is Be a Revolution. And I think people are looking for really concrete ways that they can help. And they sometimes feel overwhelmed not knowing where to start. So how can we just some suggestions you might have to fight oppression in our day to day lives? You know, I think that it's so important to realize that you can start anywhere. Right. So there's there are a couple of things. One is recognizing harm and you can pick like a space that you're most interested in. Say, I have expertise in this area. What is it like for people different than me here? What is being done here? But also saying, you know, I believe in freedom. I believe in abolition. What does that look like as a parent? What does that look like as a boss? What does that look like with my family or my community? And so for me personally, as a mother of a teenager, I'm regularly thinking, do I have this patriarchal punishment-based parenting system? Mm -hmm. Or do I have a more abolitionist community-based parenting system? And that's tricky with a teenager, but it's what I try. Well, I love the story that you share, which is just sort of like that, yeah, you're being met with sometimes a bit of attitude, which I think many parents can relate to. And yet you instead are like, where can we work together? on this. Absolutely. Right? Try to define our relationship and what we both want out of it. Mm. Yeah. Um, one of the things I find so fascinating and important you discuss is you say ability and privilege are important factors in the type of social work and social justice work that a person pursues. 
How does one navigate their privilege in working in those spaces? You know, our privilege is meant to be invisible. We're supposed to move through the world not really being aware of it because that's where systems are meant to serve us, often at the expense of others. And so if your privilege is harming others, you may not be aware until someone tells you. So I'd say first, try to learn. Try to learn how is this experience different for people with less privilege than me. Mm -hmm. And then also know that if your privilege is harming people and they bring it to you, they're trying to educate you. And that's a gift. Don't fear finding out you've done harm. Fear never finding out the harm you've done. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. That's powerful. Take that, Big. learn, grow, know you'll make mistakes, come to it with humility, try to make it right, you know, stay in communication with community, and you can be a valuable part of these movements. Mm. Wow. All Big. right, so before we embark on movement work, you say it's important for us to know how to protect our mental and physical health. How do we do that? You know, every, almost every single person I talked to, and I talked to over 34 movement workers, said, you can't do this alone. Mm. You need community. This idea that you'll be the lone superhero coming in to save the world does not work. Mm. Lean into community. Lean into people who know you. You know, find out what keeps you calm and centered. Mm. And also know that this movement work changes. It can meet you where you're at. Mm. So maybe you want to be a frontline movement worker for a while at protests, mm. and then maybe you can't do that for a while, and you want to be supportive, and you want to be giving resources or mentoring. Mm. Know that movement work can shift with you. Mm. Care for yourself. Mm. You are part of who we're fighting for, right? Mm. We're fighting for strong, whole community. Mm. And so you can't be lost in that. Mm. It's really important to keep your community close and protect your mental health by listening to yourself Mm. and letting this work move with you. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you interviewed so many interesting voices in this book, and I'm just wondering if there's one story, we have but a minute left, that you would love for people to know about one person's story. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's <laughs> hard. <laughs> <laughs> They're all so amazing. And so I would say, uh, you know, sitting uh, in my heart right now is like seeing people who show up in multiple spots. So someone like Richie Vesita, who shows up in our abolition chapter, talking about this beautiful group that he started in prisons, but then is also in our business chapter, talking about a new abolitionist business that he has started that's doing amazing work. So people can move throughout their lifetimes and create such amazing work, no matter where they are. You are such a light. Thank you so much for being here Thank and sharing you. everything. Yeah. But you are all going home with a copy. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.